Good evening and welcome to Epiphany Episcopal Church. Tonight's Celtic service combines sacred music, prayer, reflection, and meditation. It follows the structure of a traditional Episcopal evening prayer, but it has a special focus on the simplicity of expression, healing, and devotion to our Lord Jesus Christ that is found typically in Celtic services. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea, and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Please join in lighting three candles together. We light a light in the name of the Maker, who lit the world and breathed the breath of life for us. Together, we wait for the Lord. Our souls wait, and in His word do we hope. We light a light in the name of the Son, who saved the world and stretched out His hand to us. We wait for the Lord, our souls wait, and in his word do we hope. We light a light in the name of the Spirit, who encompassed the world and blessed our souls with yearning. Together, we wait for the Lord, our souls wait, and in his word do we hope. We light three lights for the Trinity of love, God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. Together, O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join in reading, O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the everlasting Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Please join our choir as they sing our opening hymn, The Day Thou Gavest, which is hymn 24 in the Episcopal Hymn.
Please join me in reading Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who among you loves life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil speaking and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry and the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones, and not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. It shall be said, build up, build up, prepare the way. Remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits in eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high place and the holy place, and also with those who are contrite and humble in spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not continually accuse, nor will I always be angry. For then the spirits would grow faint before me, even the souls that I have made. Because of their wicked covetedness, I was angry. I struck them, I hid and was angry. But they kept turning back to their own ways. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will lead them and repay them with comfort, creating for their mourners the fruit of their lips. Peace, peace to the far and the near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the tossing sea that cannot keep still. Its waters toss up mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading a song of creation. It's printed in your bulletin. O all ye works of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O let the earth bless the Lord. O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord. O all ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, 
Bless ye the Lord. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye people of God, bless ye the Lord. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. Let us bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let's pause for a moment of reflection before the next reading. A reading from Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood, and you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by him. For the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastises every child whom he accepts. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the Song of the Redeemed from the book of Revelation, chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. Let us read it together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, Great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. All glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from John's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 37 through 46. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water, now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, This is really the prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. But some asked, Surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. 
Then the temple police went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, Why did you not arrest him? The police answered, Never has anyone spoken like this. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Our reflection this evening is given by our former seminarian and now priest, the Reverend Gwen Crichton. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, Epiphany. I am so excited to be with you tonight for your Celtic worship. Thank you so much for inviting me to be with you. I have missed you all so much. In the words that Paul wrote to the church in Philippia, I thank my God every time I remember you. Constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. So tonight I wanted to talk to you about the experience of wilderness and transition and what it means to be to have hope in the wilderness and what it means to discern God's call in the wilderness. And I um, have three poems I really love that I wanted to share on each of those topics, wilderness, hope, and discernment. So first, the wilderness. What a wilderness time we have all been living through since I last saw you in May. It seems like it has just been one gigantic uh, period of Lent, since this pandemic began. For you, Epiphany, it has especially been a wilderness within a wilderness, as you have so bravely navigated the difficult transitions of being a church during COVID, a church without a rector, and a church without an interim rector. I've kept in touch from afar, and I've seen how painful and frustrating it has been for you to be in such limbo. I'm sure that at this point, transition just feels like a permanent state of exile. But you have heard me say this before, and I will say it again and again and again. Throughout the Bible, our human witness is that whenever we end up lost or in the wilderness or in exile, that is the time when God shows up. It is in the wilderness that we discover God, that we feel God's presence every time without fail. This was the case of the Judeans when the Babylonian army conquered Jerusalem and exiled the civic and religious leaders to Babylon for 50 years. In um, Second Isaiah that we read tonight, we see, though, that God remembers his people in captivity with compassion. God desires to liberate his people, to heal them and to comfort them for their building up and their restoration. The prophet says, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstruction from my people's way. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will lead them and repay them with comfort. So um, there's a poem by Tracy K. Smith, the uh, United States Poet Laureate, that really captures, I think, what it is for us to remember that God has not abandoned us when we feel most lost in the wilderness. An Old Story by Tracy K. Smith. We were made to understand it would be terrible. Every small want, every niggling urge, every hate swollen to a kind of epic wind, livid the land and ravaged like a rageful dream. The worst in us having taken over and broken the rest utterly down. A long age passed. When at last we knew how little would survive us, how little we had mended or built that was not now lost. Something large and old awoke. 
And then our singing brought on a different manner of weather. Then animals, long believed gone, crept down from trees. We took new stock of one another. We wept to be reminded of such color. And so we turn to hope. When we remember that God shows up in the wilderness, that we are God's people and he is faithful to us, we can afford hope again in God's goodness for us. As the psalmist said uh, this evening, taste and see that the Lord is good. And Epiphany, you have an incredibly hopeful story in your recent history. Epiphany was exiled in 2007 to an elementary school cafeteria because of a church schism over LGBTQ inclusion. In exile, you kept hope alive for five full years as you awaited return to your church home. And during that time and when you came back, you continued to grow in God's grace and love, proclaiming with joy and light Christ's presence on the corner in Fairfax County. You have thrived. You have changed people's lives. You have been deeply committed and faithful to God's mission to love and serve others. This is your story where your singing brought on a different manner of weather. You are hope incarnate. There's a, a poem about hope that I really love by Polly Murray, who really knows a lot about what it means to hope in the wilderness. Um, she was the first um, ordained Episcopal um, priest, African-American woman Episcopal priest. And also she was a lawyer who played a, a huge um, and underappreciated role in the civil rights movement and in fighting gender discrimination. So this is her poem um, from Dark Testament, verse 8, by Polly Murray. Hope is a crushed stalk between clenched fingers. Hope is a bird's wing broken by a stone. Hope is a word in a tuneless ditty, a word whispered with the wind, a dream of 40 acres and a mule, a cabin of one's own and a moment to rest, a name and place for one's children and children's children at last. Hope is a song in a weary throat. And only with such hope can true spiritual discernment happen. When we can sing God's song of hope in our weary throats in the wilderness, then we can begin to dream with God about what our redemption and restoration look like. We can escape the shackles of our fear and our despair and our grief, free to let our imaginations open up, to be creative, to be bold in envisioning a future that God calls us to in Christ. And I'm really excited about um, the fact you all have pulled together your discernment committee and you're starting your process to develop a parish profile and begin the intensely spiritual work of calling a new rector. You have this precious opportunity to reflect and dream about how you can continue your amazing work and witness making God's presence known on the corner. How is the Holy Spirit calling Epiphany to be the body of Christ in your community and the world? So here is a beautiful poem about discernment that I want to share with you for your journey. It is called What to Remember When Waking by David White. In that first hardly noticed moment in which you wake, Coming back to this life from the other, more secret, movable, and frighteningly honest world where everything began, there is a small opening into the new day, which closes the moment you begin your plans. What you can plan is too small for you to live. What you can live wholeheartedly will make plans enough for the vitality hidden in your sleep. 
To be human is to become visible while carrying what is hidden as a gift to others. To remember the other world in this world is to live in your true inheritance. You are not a troubled guest on this earth. You are not an accident amidst other accidents. You were invited from another, a greater night than the one from which you have just emerged. Now, looking through the slanting light of the morning window, toward the mountain presence of everything that can be, what urgency calls you to your one love? What shape waits in the seed of you to grow and spread its branches against a future sky? Is it waiting in the fertile sea? In the trees beyond the house? In the life you can imagine for yourself? In the open and lovely white page on the writing desk? God is so faithful, Epiphany. I am confident that you can and will persevere in running this race that has been set before you as you have done before. And that shapes of the reign of God's love await you in your seed to grow and spread its branches flowering and fruiting in a bountiful harvest against a future sky. Trust and know that God has amazing plans for you. I leave you with Paul's prayer for the Philippians. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best for the glory and praise of God. I love you all. God loves you and God blesses you, Epiphany. Amen.
Let us join together in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for ourselves and others. Loving God, because we are better together even as we are apart, enliven the church to do your work. That we may take up your, our cross and follow you, Lord God. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us courage to reveal you, Christ, in word and action. Creator of all, lead us and every people in the ways of justice and peace. That we may respect one another in freedom and truth. Embolden in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for our fragile world. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. That all may act with integrity and courage. Be among us to bring light in the darkness. Forgive us our wrongs, those done and those left undone. Give grace to all those whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Let us now name before God those for whom we offer our personal prayers, either silently or aloud. We pray for those impacted by the coronavirus. God of the present moment, God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. Bring hope that you may make them the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring them courage to endure what cannot be avoided, for your will is health and wholeness. Restore wellness in body, mind, and spirit. For you are God, and we need you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We pray together for knowledge of God's creation. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that, as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for the conservation of natural resources. Together, Almighty God, in giving us dominion over things on earth, 
you made us fellow workers in your creation. Give us wisdom and reverence so to use the resources of nature that no one may suffer from our abuse of them, and that generations yet to come may continue to praise you for your bounty. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us our place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, may praise you in that city of which he is the light, and where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we pray together. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. Give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. And now please join in singing our ascending hymn, Peace Before Us, from Wonder, Love, and Praise, hymn 791. Let us pray together a general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by, by, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.